We welcome back one of our old, old friends of the show, um, Mr. Matt Floyd. Matt, how have you been wintering? Not too bad, Darren. OK, uh, good to see you as well, Paul. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, now that the weather's turned and you can play cricket again, I even had a net last night, actually, which was lovely. Uh, and you can see your friends. Uh, I didn't get great, mate, but to be honest with you, I was just happy just to hit one off the middle. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, everything's it's feeling morning. a lot better now, isn't it? It's, yeah, uh, it's a lot more positive. Seems like years and years ago that you were sat in the studio with us. I think it, it, there was you and then Mark Butcher came in the week after and then that was it, lockdown. So you've been a busy man and um, I noticed um, and one of the reasons for getting you on, obviously we always love to see you and catch up, but um, you've launched a podcast and so we thought we'd uh, like to hear all about it, please. Yeah, well, I, it's probably something I should have done ages ago at the beginning of lockdown because we had a lot more time on our hands then. But uh, like a lot of other people, I was not doing very much and pretty bored and just for my own sanity, really, and mental health, I wanted to, to be a bit busier and to do some proper work. But there wasn't really much going on for me. So I thought I better launch my own podcast, seeing as that's what every man and his dog is doing at the moment. Uh, it's quite a saturated market, as you guys well know. 59 cricket podcasts in the UK alone. Really? Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, they're constantly popping up, aren't they, and disappearing. Uh, so, yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd basically keep it very simple, do a very simple format, uh, which will be just one-on-one -on -one chats, open and honest conversations with as big a names as I can find in the world of cricket that I've met along the way. Um, and, yeah, talk about cricket stuff, but also non-cricket stuff as well, not just to to be completely restricted um, with, you know, bowling actions and how to bowl slower balls and how to hit sixes and all that kind of rubbish. Um, so, for example, I did Danny Morrison as my, my first guest. He was fascinating. You know, he was brilliant on the art of commentary. Obviously, he's the kind of guy who polarises opinion as a commentator. And it was fascinating to listen to him explaining his commentary style and, and why he is very elaborate and very over the top and a lot of it is to do with because he understands the audience in India and that's kind of what they want and that's why he's so popular out there so we spoke about a bit about that he also admitted he did a bit of ball tampering when he was playing which was interesting and, and basically said that everyone was doing it in the 80s and 90s but then we also talked about uh Unfortunately, some of the tragedy in, in his life, his, his sister committed suicide and uh, it had a, a big effect on him uh, mentally. So we talked a lot about mental health and how to stay on top of that. And he really opened up. So it, it was a, and a really interesting chat. It kind of went from, from one spectrum to the other and we got quite deep in the end. Um, but with Danny, it's always pretty lighthearted uh, across the board. So, you know, we, we kind of, did a bit of both, really. But, yeah, really enjoyed uh, talking to him about it and and uh, finding out a bit more about him. I think you unearthed the side that not many of us have seen before, or hardly anyone, probably. I mean, we're all used to the larger-in-life pork pie-wearing commentator. Yeah, no, Danny so, does, actually, doesn't he? Uh, I don't know whether you like him, no Paul, one. or not, but he really does polarise opinion. He's the one commentator who almost treats it like he's acting, in some ways, and he's so over the top. And interestingly, he was talking about how he speaks with a real economy of words, and he speaks very slowly. A lot of that is to do because of the Indian audience, and they don't always speak as, as good English as, as, say, if he was commentating for a, a New Zealand audience or an Australian audience. So it's quite smart, really, in the way he commentates. He's just very simple with how he constructs his sentences but he's at the same time over the top in his delivery if you take that as an example you can see a lot of of his style rubbing off in in other um more exuberant commentators should we say i'm thinking of bumble you know there's, there's probably quite a lot of similarities in the way that they commentate yeah definitely they're from the same sort of school although bumble maybe not quite as much of a, an actor i would say in some ways as danny danny's really sort of cheesy and over the top sometimes <laughs> whereas Bumble is more of your sort of witty comedian isn't he um a little bit more 
reserved, I would say, a little bit, although sometimes he has his moments, as we know. We were lucky enough to, to speak to Bumble a few weeks ago, um, and we've also spoke, spoken with NASA. We finally, finally tracked down NASA. Yeah. Um, and, and Nick Knight and um, Athers earlier on. They all say the same, that with, with Bumble, what you see is what you get. You know, totally. Everyone sees on the TV and, and he is on commentary. He's exactly the same as day-to-day Bumble. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's the kind of person who'll just walk into a pub by himself, doesn't know anyone, will talk to everyone in there, make friends. There's no pretense about him. Um, yeah, it's been a privilege to, to work with him, really. He's, he's such an interesting guy. I, I liked your chat with NASA as well. Uh, he was on good form, I thought. Yeah, yeah. enjoyed that one, didn't we, Darren? That was, yeah, we really did because we weren't sure what to expect from him, whether he was going to be dead serious. And because it, it's taken us so long to get him, and he's sort of consistently pushed back, I think is the right word. But when we got him, he just relaxed and was, was, was excellent, excellent company and, and was, was, was really revealing in the stuff he was talking to us about. So we were really pleased. Yeah, he was. He really opened up, didn't he? I mean, I'm thinking of doing him, I think, for one of my early ones too, uh, jumping on your, your bandwagon. But He's a very misunderstood character, I think. I think some people think he's extremely serious because of, you know, the serious analysis he does uh, when he's broadcasting. And he is a very intense person, but he's got a really wicked sense of humour as well. And he's really good fun to be around. I just wish more people saw that side to him. Well, he does show it occasionally, doesn't he, I suppose, in the studio chats. Um, he just takes his job very seriously and he's very good at it. I think he's just very passionate about sport, cricket, full stop. I mean, Webby and I see him quite often, you know, when he's watching his his children playing locally. And you'll see him on the boundary, quite often sort of apart from everyone on his own, because he's focused on what's going on the pitch and what his kids are doing. And, and he, he told us in, in our interview that uh, sometimes he has to check himself to remind himself that he's not England captain and he's not shouting at the spinner where to pitch it outside of stump or whatever. <laughs> I, think it's just I guess that side never leaves you, does it? But I think you're right. I think that is the side that people that maybe misunderstand with him. And that, you know, if you are going to hit those heights, you do have to have, um, a, you know, that street to your personality or that, that passion or that, so that dedication. Yeah, totally. And what's interesting is that, is that, you know, not everyone is like that. There are, there are so many different characters in the world of cricket I mean, I just uh, spoke to Brendan McCullum, so he's going to be the second episode of the podcast and totally relaxed guy, a real sort of cavalier approach to playing the game and then to to coaching as well. He wants his players to be completely free and unfettered and and relaxed and have a beer after the game if they fancy it. Um, You know, NASA was was different school, I would say, you know, a lot more kind of strict and a lot more on it but totally different personalities and totally different kinds of players as well it's fascinating how cricket can throw up these different kinds of characters i think we're discovering that from the various people that we talk to that um, you, you know they are revealing very varied personalities and approaches to the game and uh, on and off the field as well so, you know some people when they're not playing cricket want to get completely away from it and do something completely different whereas others you know can't leave it alone yeah, and I think it's healthy to have outside interests, to be honest. I think uh, if you don't, you, you can get a bit in your bubble, and especially now when you actually are in a bubble a lot of the time and you're around cricket 99% of your waking hours, you do have to have something else or a couple of other things to get away from the game. Otherwise, especially when you're not doing well and the spotlight of the media is on you, it can really consume you. Um, but I guess that's easier said than done, you know, when it's just your life and, and it's what you're relying on to, to, you know, send your kids to school and everything else. So remind us again, what's the name of the podcast? Oh, yeah, of course. It is uh, All Out <laughs> is the name of the podcast, as in we're going to be letting it all out, open and honest chat. So just search All Out on any of the podcast platforms. Uh, it'll be on Spotify. It'll be on Apple uh, all the others and uh, you'll find the Danny Morrison episode on there already and I will hope to get Brendan McCullum out probably early next week to coincide with the beginning of the IPL which starts at the end of next week he's of course the head coach of the Kolkata Knight Riders so he was excellent on 
the IPL and gave us a real insight into how a head coach prepares his team for the IPL and the auction and going through to the start of it. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll hopefully get Nasser done as well and get him on there in a few days. Yeah, you should. You should. Well, we'll, uh, we'll look after that. We recommend that everyone that follows us and listens to us uh, goes and checks it out. All Out is the name of it because everyone's letting it all out. <laughs> Seriously, guys, thanks a lot. I really, really appreciate uh, coming on your show and the plug. Excellent. Always great to catch up with you, Matt. And we'll um, hopefully we'll drag you down to Brentwood uh, in the summertime. And uh, yeah, you can uh, you can do the hosting duties while me and Paul just put our feet up and have a cup of tea. I'll come down for sure, but I'm not doing any hosting. I guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Floyd, many, many thanks.